Buenos dias. My grandmother always ta taught me that before you begin to tell a story, before you enter a conversation, you say who, you introduce yourself, you say what place and what people you belong to. I was fortunate to have been raised in the northern New Mexico communities of Costilla in Cuesta, New Mexico, to the hands of three incredible people. My father, who was a lifelong um, rancher and farmer, and my mother, who spent decades schooling children in her village of Cuesta. And also to the woman who taught me about the value of memory and imagination, my grandmother, who at the age, who, when I was five years old, took my little hand rubbed it against the walls of her indigenous Pueblo and taught me that I have always belonged to this place. It'll always call you home, and that's who I am. And I grew up in Santa Fe, New Mexico. My people are from the northern part of New Mexico. I grew up in an ancient city, a 400-year-old city. My neighborhood was new, and all I remember is that there were many children in the neighborhood. So in the evening, after dinner, we'd all run out and, and play together. So I had this memory of being together in community. My mother was a Spanish dancer, and my father was an engineer. And my mother, it was my mother who gave me back my language, because in my neighborhood, we didn't speak any Spanish. We want to invite you all into this resolana. A resolana is literally the sunny side the of a clicker. We need I a need clicker. a clicker. <laughs> <laughs> the resolana is the sunny side of a house <laughs> Wait. Uh, or a, 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 a building in northern New Mexico. But it's really what TEDx is all about. It's gathering a community where wisdom, knowledge, memory can be shared together. This image, taken from the late 1800s in Costilla, shows not only a family gathered, multiple generations, but the artistry that's possible even in a rural, rural village that's suffering from poverty. So Resolana is about illuminating our history, drawing from the past into the present, and looking into the future. And so this is our Resolana for you today. We need art and culture in our community. We always need it. It's a part of us. It's a part of our past. And it will always be a part of our future. One of the reasons we need art in our community is to inform us. I have this vivid memory of going to Sevilla, Spain. And I was drawn to a little village within Sevilla, Spain that was a medieval village um, occupied by um, Jews when they were sort of living within their own community. So I lived in this community. And one of the things I was drawn to was the fact that the streets were only 15 feet wide. There were no cars. People didn't live their lives in a high-tech world. They lived in their communities, and then they would go out and, and work during the day and then come back. So when I was there, I had to learn how to live that way. So at first, I was afraid. I, was, I had this fear, and I didn't know what that fear was. So I was in pursuit of understanding that fear. So I, I just put myself in the, in the middle of the town, and I said, find your way home. And the way that I did it is I engaged all of my senses. And I figured out how to walk through the little, little streets that were 15 feet wide. Um, and I ended up finding my way home by using color and sound and all the, you know, listening to all the people talking in the, in the little tablaos and listening to the music in the neighborhood. And that's how I would find my way home. Inspiration. Inspiration is something that we need to have. It's something that tells us something about what's inside of us. Um, I was directing a dance program and, um, as an example. And I, I selected this one woman. Her name's Maritza. And I believed that, that she had the ability to impersonate and embody this woman that was from a small town 
who was 16 years old. She was a muse of a painter, and she had an embarrassment of this experience that she had, she had to live through the rest of her life. So Maritza told the story of this woman. When she did that, I think that what she did was that she spiritually engaged the person, and she gave that back to, to her audience. And that's inspiration. It's when you can embrace it, you can embody it, and you give it to, you give it to the community. You give it back to the audience. Teresa, art is also about transformation. We've, we've seen that already and heard that in some of the talks today. I think of one example that I'm going to shamelessly share because in less than a month, we get to open the Fresco Torreon at the National Hispanic Cultural Center, which is magnificent. We're giving Ted Exers the peek in with this image right in front of us today from the artist who has been able to transform that space. When I began at the National Hispanic Cultural Center less than a year, or a little bit more than a year ago, as I was driving up to the Torreon, I was so conscious of the fact that here we had a symbol, a Torreon, a watchtower, that's not only um, historically in place in, in many different communities in northern New Mexico, but a global. It's a global um, uh, edifice that is placed almost at the entrance of every single community historically. It was always about watching out for enemies. I was trying to reconcile this incredible center that I was about to take uh, the lead of and in, in hopefully understand the value of creativity, arts, and culture. And I realized this symbol of the past, which was about division and watching out for enemies, until I walked into the Torreon and saw this magnificence, the largest, I, one of the largest concave frescoes that's going to be present in the United States of America. And once you see it, you're going to see thousands of years of history. Every single continent is represented there. That's what it means to, not just to be Latino in the United States, but what it means to be a global citizen. Art helps us transform these old symbols. All, art is also about sustaining our communities. It's not just gathering the communities together. I think of two two examples. I was fortunate um, in, in the past decade to have been working with archaeologists um, digging up the history that's thousands of years old here in New Mexico, in this place, in this place of sovereign antiquity that we now call New Mexico. And I was remembering this image of a woman who had probably made that bowl in the 1100s. That bowl, when she held it up, represented clay from another community, design, pigment. Even what that bowl held represented the connectedness in the entire community and how, how we come together. It, it informed, it inspired, it transformed, and it ultimately sustained that particular community. Art does that. I also think of the woman who emerged from the rubble in Haiti. In between tears, the first thing that she did was break into song. Art helps us move through good and bad times, and it helps us ultimately survive through whatever it is that we're going through. It helps sustain us. There's a lot of talk about sus sustainability right now. I really think that sustainability is many things. It's not just one thing. Um, we talk about sustaining our, our water, you know, preserving our water resources. We talk about sustainable building. We talk about uh, sustain the way we can sustain ourselves by using public transportation. There are buzzwords around sustainability right now. We're talking about hybrid, hybrid this, hybrid that. But I think that what is left out is this idea that we need to think about sustainability as thriving, thriving in our communities, 
and evolving. I think that everything needs to evolve together. It's not just one answer. It's, it's the community working together to thrive and to evolve. Absolutely. Um, it takes us back to the notion of the resolana. There is an art to conversation. There's an art to storytelling. And there's certainly an art to creativity, how we're able to come together. We believe that you do this not as one individual, but as a community. There was a book that was written about New Mexico 400 years ago, published in 1610, called La Historia de Nuevo México. And the author pointed to the divine gifts given to humans as memory, intelligence, and that intelligence over time and over generations is what leads us to wisdom, and ultimately, the human will. So those three gifts, memory, uh, intelligence, and will. And it's really together that we're able to do that, to forge forward in, in imagining and dreaming uh, our future for not just for us at the present moment, but for future generations as well. That's what we believe in. This global phenomena of, of a resolana is about illuminating the power of creativity to bring us together. And I think of uh, bien dice el dicho que una mano no se lava sola. And what he said is that you cannot wash this hand without the other. So together in community, this is how we sustain our communities and help them evolve, is that we do it together. Thank you.